I'm Sean Bartley here with the Comics Pals, and we are here live at New York Comic Con 2017. I am standing next to one of my favorite creators, Mr. Ed Brisson. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you. How has your con experience been for you so far? It's been pretty good. It's been really brisk and uh, been signing a lot of books. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Like I said earlier, I slept 10 hours last night, so I'm like, I'm just hopping around right now and I'm like full of energy. It's all been good. I'll come back and talk to you on Sunday and right. see if you still have that high you level will. of energy. I'll be gone on Sunday. I'm, I'm oh. flying back to Canada for okay. Thanksgiving. Okay, well, that sounds like a great idea because this place is going to be packed tomorrow. Yeah. We're here on Friday. It's a nice, decent day. Saturdays, it gets crazy. You're familiar with that. You've been here many, many years in a row. What about New York Comic Con do you enjoy? Why do you keep coming back? There's, there's a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, there's a Thai restaurant around here that I really like a lot. Oh, really? You want to and shout I, it out? And I, 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 Thai Select. I go there like five, six times when I'm here. Awesome. Um, but I, I just like that it's, it's, a, it's a huge show, but it still seems primarily comic focused. And so it's a great place for me to come and hang out with like a lot of my comic friends and, and you know, in a pretty, pretty cool city as well. Would you say that you see uh, a growth in terms of the interest in the comics at this convention, or do you think it's kind of going the other way, where television and film is sort of taking over? I think it's, you know, you hear that complaint a lot from people. I, I don't see that much of a difference from, like, when I started going to shows like this one in 2011. It seems that the balance has always been about the same. So, and I, and I think there's enough room for everything, you know. If it was just comics, it would be a much smaller show. That, yeah, absolutely. Now... I'm a big fan, a massive, massive fan of the violin. I'm trying to compose myself. Uh, that book struck me like lightning, honestly. It kind of came out of nowhere. I saw previews, and I said, I have to pick this up, and I was completely floored. Uh, but of course, I was saddened to learn that it ended. So can you tell me, is it, is it possible that we could get it back? Is it coming back? Do you know anything? Please. So yeah, Adam and I, were both over at Marvel doing a bunch of stuff right now. And so we're pretty busy, but our hope is that we will bring it back. I can't say when that's going to happen, but uh, I have plans for up to five volumes of it um, and stories sort of loosely mapped out. So we know where we want to take it, uh, but we just want to be able to um, come back and do it when the time is right, when we could bring enough readers back with us to ensure that when we come back, we come back for good. Right. You know, that it's not going to be one more volume and then we go away for three more years we want to be able to come back and you know we have talked about different things i don't know what's going to take one of the plans was maybe to just do a trade every 18 months or something like that or or just come back with a five issue miniseries once a year but you know obviously adam's got a lot of work going on and and finding time is a little bit difficult but we're we're on it we, we've been talking we actively talk about it we know we want to do it it's just finding the right time so for those of you who are fans of The Violent, that is massive news. Very happy to hear that. For those of you who aren't fans of The Violent, you need to get that. You need to find that book and read it. It is amazing. So it's stuck with me since I read it. Uh, very sort of haunting in a lot of ways just because of sort of the, the realness of it. It, it's, it very much feels like stories that could happen. Right. What was the inspiration for the series that you, that you put out? I'll tell you that. There's a lot of things going on in that book. Um, there's a lot of my own anxiety about being a parent. Um, there was a lot of my anger towards the city of Vancouver and the, uh, and the housing crisis and how that was being dealt with. Uh, in a lot of ways, it was a weird, like, almost like a breakup letter with the city. I finished writing, so it's set in Vancouver. I finished writing the last issue and legitimately after we did the last script I was like okay we got to move out of here and my wife and I have since moved out of Vancouver so it was it was very cathartic for me to do it but there is there is a lot of stuff in there that I really wanted to get out um, the two main the two main protagonists are based loosely on people I knew who moved to Vancouver and became heroin addicts um, and and sort of just fell off the earth and so there, there is the reason it probably feels real is that there is there are nuggets of truth in that book uh, uh, throughout. So you've since started working at Marvel, and things are going great. Iron Fist, fantastic. What was your mission statement when you picked up that book and you started to work on it? What, what were the things that you wanted to bring to that title? 
Well, I'm a huge Iron Fist fan, and so I've always liked Iron Fist. Really wanted to. The thing I really wanted to do was get. I wanted to make it feel like a kung fu flick, man. I just wanted to like I love those old Shaw, Shaw Brothers films, those little kung fu movies, and I just really wanted to have that flavor while still staying true to the character. And I think that's something we pulled off. And actually, kind of funny, every arc that we've been doing, I've been kind of like, I'm a huge film nerd, and I'm like I'm really into like a lot of like 70s and 80s cinema and I've actually been like kind of just playing around with thematically basing each arc on a different sort of old uh, like film genre okay. and uh, so yeah I've been having a lot of fun doing that and, and, and I feel like especially that the Shaw Brothers it, it, it feels so authentic to what Iron Fist should be and uh, you know hopefully people pick up on that and, and, and uh, uh, dig it I think I've got a lot of positive reaction about that so, you know, I'm happy with it. And that, that was sort of my mission statement going in. But just kind of like having like classic Danny, you know. What's it like having worked on books like The Violent that are great, but sort of struggle to fight an audience? It's hard to get it out there to people. Right. Versus Iron Fist, where the audience is built in almost, and it sort of brings recognition to a lot of other things that you've done. Well, it's an interesting thing because like the, doing The Violence doing you know sheltered or, or whatever you know this all comes from us and so we don't know what the expectations are going to be right and the other does the reader the reader can come into it cold come into it fresh i do feel that like when i'm doing marvel books there is the like, readers do have their own expectation on the books and so there's some pressure there to not screw it up and not you know not destroy their toys you know what i mean right. and um but beyond that like i you know, I just always try and find something in the story that speaks to me and then drive towards that. And so the actual writing part of it doesn't, I don't think changes that much for me. Right. Are there any other Marvel characters that sort of speak to you that you would like to apply your stylings to? I don't know. How much time have you got? Like, there's like, <laughs> I think for me, like, yes. Like, um, you know, I'm a big street level guy, like with street level characters. So, like, it's not going to be a surprise to anyone here that I want to write Daredevil, that I want to write Punisher. Um, you know, like, Winter Soldier is another character I'd like to write. Um, there's, a, there's a ton. I, I, like, I have a long, long list. Uh, Venom is actually another one I really like. Um, but, like, also, like, one of the things I would love to do at one point is I would like to write Speedball and make everybody fall in love with Speedball, which seems like the impossible task. <laughs> But I have such a soft spot for speedball that I want, I, you know, I want to do something cool with speedball at some point. That's not to say that there will ever be a speedball series. I, I imagine that, that won't happen. But, you know, there are, like, there are little characters that I'd like to play around with. Uh, obviously, the stuff I'm already on, Old Man Logan and, and Iron Fist were, were two of those that uh, were on my bucket list. So that I got them this early into my tenure at Marvel is kind of still crazy to me. That's fantastic, and you guys heard it here. Petition Marvel for a Speedball comic. Let's get that out there. Hashtag Speedball. Uh, so one last question for you. Your career has really sort of taken off. Uh, Matthew Rosenberg, Chris Sabella, you guys from Two-Headed Press are doing big things now. What's it like to see you guys kind of on the rise together? It's great. You know, a lot of us have known, like, I've known Matt since 2011, you know, and I've known Sabella since around the same time. You know, for, for us to all come up together, is, it's been really great. It's, it, it's, we've been struggling together and working together, and, and that the fact that we're all sort of rising up at the same time, uh, it's, just, it's just really kind of crazy, um, but it's good. I think, you know, that there was a reason that we were attracted to each other's work and, and, and hanging out with one another, and, you know, it's nice to see that realized. It's, it's very cool, and all of you are super talented, so I'm glad to see up-and-coming writers and artists getting shine in this industry that is hard to break into. That's right. Yeah, I appreciate it. Absolutely. So that's going to do it for this interview. Thank you so much, Ed, for taking the time to speak to me. Wow. Really, really appreciate it. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me online at edbrisson.com or on Twitter at, at edbrisson. Awesome. There you go. So... I'm Sean Bartley with the Comics Pals. Keep it locked. We're covering everything in New York Comic Con 2017. We're at the Comics Pals, wherever your social media is sold. And I'm going to get back to this amazing convention. Take care, guys.